Hey everyone, August the 6th, some big activations going on today. We had two big solar flares and the Sun Jupiter square at the same time. Jupiter is always somewhat involved when there's big flares. It seems Jupiter is jolting the Sun, creating this dynamic, this expansive pressure of new energies coming our way. So yes, we had two big flares. Here you see the spikes. That was the X1.6 yesterday late night and today, just a few hours ago, this M5.5. And as we speak and record here, you see we already have another spike going, probably an M1 flare here. So the sun has been super active, there's a pressure on, definitely. There's been a G3 class geomagnetic storm on since yesterday already, early morning, uh, 2.53 universal time it says here, with aurora spotted as far south as Arizona. So, our whole Earth envelope is heated up, is powered up by these energies and these flares have been Jupiter directed. That's another really interesting little detail and it ties into a bigger picture of activation of Mercury and Pallas as we will see. Mercury and Pallas will have their first conjunction just in a couple days. Then Mercury turns retrograde on the 23rd and is catching up with on its backward motion with Pallas once more on the 26th to eventually for a third time catch up with Pallas in Libra by then on October the 12th. But more on that just to come in the next few minutes. So Mercury and Pallas, what is the theme here? Mercury is about perception, about mental processing of what we see and Pallas is the scientific extension to that. Whenever Pallas comes in, then we are really getting interested in patterns, in seeing how things are connected, interconnected, we are able to connect the dots. So we have this conjunction of Mars, Pallas and Mercury already here in Virgo, in Mercury sign. Mercury is in Virgo, as I uh, said, from July the 28th into early October. So this is will be a core phase. Mercury will turn retrograde in that sign. Is within the me, me, uh, the retro loop right now. So we are already building up to this um, processing period, and definitely the Mercury Palace theme is central this time around. Interesting. This flare here, how this ties into what's to come. Just first of all, um, see the Jupiter Sun square here, angular, hmm? and in a 90 degree angle to the horizon here. And then the Moon is in an interesting place here, 1124 Aries. Here you have the heliocentric Mercury Palace conjunction of October the 15th. That is the only time within one year's time that Mercury catches up to Palace. Actually, not in one year's time, in 88 days' time. I should be more clear here. This is Mercury takes 88 days. So, anyway, in three months, once every three months, Mercury connects with Palace the next time on October 15th coming. And here we have 
11.31 as their meeting point, which will set the tone for the next two months then into the end of the year for that inquisitive and, uh, and um, inquiring energy into finding patterns and understanding the fine print of what's truly going on this planet and this is definitely very very important so it is interesting just to look ahead a bit here the 12th degree of libra the key phrase here again i'm using the sabian symbols here for those of you who are new here by rudy r miners are surfacing from a deep coal mine the need to carry on at ever deeper levels the quest for knowledge which keeps burning the fires of the collective mind of a society <laughs> how about makes total sense we're really starting to dig deep this will be the next phase it's we are still building up those of you who are in this channel listening to my kind of explanations of what's going on you guys know this is a longer process we have to be a bit more patient it is building steadily building we are getting real traction here and into early 2024 that is the core phase of a real breakthrough January 2024 I still see as a major first big turning point yes we had several others already we are on track there's no question to that it's just not easy for everyone to see so this um, 12th degree of Libra the search for knowledge demands the dedication of many minds digging ever deeper into the realities of our earthly existence it's a hard often dark pursuit amidst great difficulties and the possibility of being spiritually asphyxiated which means we're running out of oxygen like miners experience when they're deep down in the earth asphyxiated by the constant intellectual effort and tension when a person is confronted by this this symbol it could be interpreted as showing the need for such an intellectual dedication but also as pointing to the advis advisability of emerging from it and leading a more natural life so it is really a phase we're going deep into that extreme um, research I would say um, in this this will be the phase when probably the whole planet will be pushed through that it's work for the sake of the collective he keeps saying here Rudy R and the keyword is extraction so that's where we are heading and we are building up to that 10 minutes after that solar flare here at x.16 the sun changed um come on where are you okay into hexagram seven hmm. hexagram seven 13 15 starting in leo where we are now in for the next six days is classically named the army and it is that again deep digging into the fabric of reality to get hold of that undercurrent of which moves things into the right directions the central hexagram of this cardinal opposition 
not cardinal, sorry, uh, fixed, mm, the fixed signs which are holding the ground, which are holding the universe in place. It's kind of an anchor point which is set for these next few days. Interesting also the resonance of this chart and the one we just looked at with the upcoming um, solar eclipse. See again, this is this one and this is the upcoming eclipse. You see pretty much the same degrees here. So this is an important preparation towards what is coming in that solar eclipse will actually be super super interesting it will be framed by two occultations one of mercury and the other of mars i guess i have it right here mercury occultation that means when m mercury will disappear behind the moon just hours before the solar eclipse and just hours after the solar eclipse when the moon emerges here on the other side it will pass in front of mars this is rare that we have occultations actually you see here i have to um no i don't have it open no it's not open anyway there were only few occultations this year this is um very special again mars and mercury mars and mercury you see them here then the second flare m 5.5 5.5 again just even the numbers five is the number of dynamics of things going really intensely fast that's what we are seeing these days what's interesting in the news feed i have a few things i wanted to show you here aside from these flares um, this is from the volcano mount etna blowing off smoke in perfect rings over this weekend hmm. interesting i found that etna is always a center point of attention edgar casey had made several predictions about how etna and its um, eruptions are linked into the this story of evolution we are in which was predicted by him as well interesting also what elon Musk put out to today if you were unfairly treated by your employer due to posting or liking something on this platform we will fund your legal bill no limit and we won't just sue it will be extremely loud and we will go after the boards of directors of the companies too yes it's heating up on all levels this was another really interesting um, news clip i came up which came up today a groundbreaking solution in microplastic removal from water which this scientist has found and this was just released also on august 1st just shortly after mercury had entered virgo so you see it's quite multi-dimensional what is going on here so many layers so many levels but it is that scientific focus and then another interesting one is um well let's go step by step this is the sun jupiter square when it was exact the sun was at midnight which magnifies the impact of this um evolutionary boost uh, jupiter and the sun when they are in an aspect together give that expansion opening 
and also release of lots of energy which is matching what we looked at that geomagnetic storm and the big solar flares I want to show you this quickly too I guess I showed you this already but um, this is the direction 89 west was the fem m5.5 flare and west 77 just keep these numbers in mind we're going there and um, the other thing i wanted to show you here is the radiation earth and its environment is bombarded with here we are that was the x 1.6 flare again that is the Lockheed Martin page lmsal.com and here you see the rise in um, charged electrons bombarding earth this is the m5.5 event so it is um truly making sense in that sun jupiter square which is exactly that that exuberant energy coming in and naturally this is very transformative i guess you can feel that this the moon here conjunct Aries and the north node at that moment sun and jupiter had their exact square and um, well Aries and the North Node so this is a big theme and this will go on for several months the lunar nodes they move kind of in a waterfall and then they have uh, come to a flat kind of phase and then again a waterfall so every so often for a few weeks the nodes are almost not moving and that is happening right now so this conjunction of, of um, Aries will be on for several months Aries the one which pushes for truth regardless of the consequences in a way um, going for the whole deal and not shying away from uh, even conflict and um, opposition and, and clash. So that is the basic energy we are in and with the moon here between the two. Yes, I mean, this is just a beautiful classic example of that activation. So this coming week will be quite interesting. This will kind of set the stage and whatever manifest takes place will be starting to it's like throwing yeast in into the the mix and it starts bubbling and it will build up into the time around the solar eclipse of october the 14th which we were visiting before where the conclusion seems to come where the resolution appears around that time Here's the heliocentric chart of that same moment when Jupiter and Earth were in square. Again, you see 77 degrees ahead of the Earth is Jupiter right now. And remember, that was the degree the solar flares, at least the first the X1.6, was directed at 77 west. The second one was 80 nine west a little more somewhere in the 12th degree so but still in that main direction jupiter being about 40 minutes in light speed away from earth so jupiter has received that energy pretty much around the time when um it was squaring the sun as seen from earth you see if we go back here to yeah um, a few hours later anyway within that range so and this is another interesting addition to what we were just looking at mars and mercury in the human design system 
where we look at this graph here no it's not that one which i want to show you i have it here okay um here is it okay so this is hexagram 64 and yeah just bear with me and 47 mercury just entered 64 and mars just entered um 47 here so they will form a channel for the next week the channel of abstraction and i have this open here too channel of abstraction links the head center through the gate 64 here you see it once more to 47 so this is collectively activated this gate for a week I say which is about confusion coming to realization this is a collective circuit and it's not so much about logic it's about sensing out the past the abstract is based upon experience let me just close this again here okay okay it's i opened this by accident let's see okay let's close it again yes here we go so you can um stop the screen and read this uh, super interesting in the context of what's going on again this is a creating something which is shared by everyone that mental process of trying to wrap our head around of what we are just seeing to pop out into the open the next few days will be super interesting building up to that 11th to 13th of august more on that coming soon i'm still having planned for that it's just so much is happening that's why i'm um lagging behind with that but bear with me it's coming interesting also the um part of fortune here opposing mercury so it's all about that focus on unraveling and opening up all which is not making sense and bring it into the conscious consideration looking at it and then yes you see this is the first um, of the three conjunction mercury and palace will have watch out for this moon conjunct uranus and that's exactly two weeks before mercury will turn retrograde and the moon will be at 23 20 so again we have that uranus contact which electrifies the mind the leo rising aries midheaven it's all coming together one piece at a time the earth here conjunct hygia it is about um, that whole big subject of health well-being and 
coming into a greater balance with everything else, understanding, seeing what is healthy, what is good, why we are not healthy, why things are not good. All of that is um, being spilled out way more openly. See here we have the two Mercury on its way to turn retrograde now slowing down quite a bit. Then on the 26th, that is a few days after Mercury had turned, here you see it now on a backward motion and having its second meeting with Pallas here at 2133. The Moon conjunct the galactic center, always a sign of an intense moment of something being beamed into this reality under a square with Neptune here naturally. So it is first and foremost the confusion is becoming more obvious, more um, dynamic, more crazy in many ways because that is necessary. We have to go to that extreme level for the whole thing to start flipping it is only at the extreme point where the pendulum turns and swings then the other way. So we have to allow for that in that grand uh, square um, trine here with the again the north node and Aries and the black moon. Yes, the beans are being spilled. There's no question on that. Lots and lots of people are just coming to that spot of starting to scratch their heads and say something is not adding up in this uh, storyline we are presented with and that's actually another good story I just uh, saw today which I shared is 2.8 million Brits are no more wanting to pay their um, fees to for BBC so that is a big number of people who realize that those mainstream channels um, are not really doing their job anymore. They have just uh, become, have become deteriorated into pure propaganda. That's how we, where we are really in this script. It is all naturally coming to a place where it crumbles down and the truth is um, coming into full vision, all these um, walls which have been built around what is truly growing on, they're falling down. As I compared it in an earlier recording, it is kind of the trumpets we are playing, walking around the city of Jericho, if you know that biblical story for they walked around um, that um, city and they were blowing the trumpets and that sound, those sound waves made those walls crumble down. That's exactly what's going on right now. So this then is the third of the conjunctions, which will be just, as I said, days prior the um, October 14th solar eclipse. Remember the 21st, 21st, 22nd degree, that was when Mercury at that point in, in time had turned retrograde, which is still to come from where we are, which is August the 23rd. So anyway, this is a powerful point for Mercury. And then we have again, okay, and this 27, uh, 19 which I found super interesting as this resonates with this chart again that M5.5 solar flare so you see again it's all interconnected it's so magical how that all works out it's it's a, a symphony it's it's a it's an amazing structure which is energetically building which really forces and evolution in a certain direction it's like guardrails i guess that's the best way to see it yes there's still um personal freedom any moment we have that freedom but it is definitely 
pushing us into a certain direction and we will eventually all come into mutual alignment with one another coming to the same conclusion that's the singularity event in the positive way naturally when there's a um, coherence when everything moves in line with everything else that is still to come anyway i found that super interesting again this resonance here with that third um, mercury palace conjunction which is the final one which is always the conclusive one interesting so this is again the heliocent the geocentric chart once more here 1306 where they meet for the third time and that same moment as seen from the sun sees mercury at 2805 here in virgo and <laughs> now when M mercury enters libra which you see mercury is just here at the edge of entering libra mercury moves pretty fast um, heliocentrically speaking as it takes 88 days once around the sun so about four to five degrees per day so this is 10.03 in the morning and then we are at um, nine twenty four p.m. when Mercury is now entering Libra heliocentrically on its way to catch up with Pallas here also in the heliocentric picture and that moment I found a pretty awesome moon at 28.30 in Virgo. So you see um, this correlation. The moon is here now in the degree where it was earlier in the day, where Mercury was earlier in the day heliocentrically. Mm -hmm. I found that as a, an interesting correlation again, which basically means with um, mercury entering libra all that research that has been going into the depth of the matter into understanding and realizing and sorting out now it's come into the phase of being displayed and shared and openly discussed and widely spread as this is a cardinal sign now it takes on a whole new direction of confrontation which um, Libra is also representing hmm? measuring your forces with your opponent kind of that's one very important aspect of the sign libra it's kind of a friendly competition you could call it okay yes and then uh, two days later we have a mercury occultation mercury disappearing behind the moon the solar eclipse and then the Mars occultation Mars disappearing behind the moon in Scorpio now Mars it's another big shift into the into a greater intensity mm -hmm. till the um, let me let me look it up once more when is the day when yes 
Yes, Mars enters Scorpio on the 12th as well. So this is all happening simultaneously. And then, yes, this is then the final chart I have here for you. Which we already saw the resonance with that first flare we had today, that first big flare. So it is all one uh, big story here. And the conclusion is to understand what truly is going on on this planet. This is where we are heading. Hmm? Anyway, <laughs> thanks again for joining and listening. And um, yes, stay tuned for that Philadelphia experiment story. It's coming. Uh, I am sure I will get that into the tube tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>